Hello friends, welcome back to Noobs in Disguise, the show in which we have one anonymous replay, two professional StarCraft players, and one guess each to figure out what the MMR is. Today, the player we'll be looking at is going to be our Zerg right here in the bottom left. Zerg will be playing against the Protoss in the top right in the red colors. As always, I am joined by my good friend and collaborator, Lambo. How are you doing, buddy? Hello, I'm doing fantastic. Today I don't actually know who the submitter is. Obviously you guys do. But I enjoy my pure um, viewing pure experience of, of, of not of not actually knowing from the get-go who's winning. <laughs> so so yeah, I, I muted it this time. I'm not sure if you guys prefer uh, us saying it at the beginning or not. You guys can let us know in the comments. Either way, I prefer it this way, so I'm going to try it out. Even though I'm also behind in the guesses, I'm not, I'm not sure this will help me, but it's it's... <laughs> It's a, it's a big comeback story anyway, so if I make that happen. Yeah, it's a pure experience. I did see some comments mentioning specifically that, yes, it's far away, but it's also just one really bad gas. You know, it's 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 far, but it's not that far in a way. Like, anything can happen, you know? All I need is one or true. two very bad weeks, and life is going to be good. Talking about good and bad weeks, let's take a look at the wall here of the Protoss player. This is an interesting one, as it is going to technically be a two-building wall, but the pylon will remain very... Well, never mind. Cancel that statement. That's um, too far to the top, isn't it? Yeah, it's too far to the gate. <laughs> I was gonna say this is nice because this is a two building wall and you often see that being used wrong. Um, there still was a hole here on the bottom side for Bane Links. Now there is a two, two hex hole as well in this wall, which means that a single zealot or a single stalker isn't going to be capable of holding this wall. On top of that, this was a core before Nexus, which isn't that odd, it is odd. But also, it is a pylon before Nexus, which personally I have never seen before. We also see the cybernetics core finishing, well, basically 18 seconds too late for this particular build order. So, not the tightest start that I've seen in my life, Lambo. Yeah, I mean, it was reactive uh, in his defense because he's, he went to block and then he saw that there was a pull first. Mm. So, th th that's why he went core first. He could have finished this wall nicely if he just, instead of putting where the shield battery is right now, just put a big building, one to the top. Yeah. of the gateway. It, it could have still been a nice wall. This one I'm not so sure about. Does a stalker fit through there no. or did they, did they change this? I don't think yeah. a stalker will fit through there either. Yeah, so this is um, yeah, this is the worst case scenario when it comes to the early game. There's our players looking uh, real solid so far. Just built the hatchery a bit forward. Yeah. Pool first. Didn't really build that many links, just two. And they are on the other side of the map. Maybe <laughs> the man has that. 300 gas. I'm sorry. sorry to interrupt you, but Wait, this what? is not a smooth early game. <laughs> the Zerg has 300 gas and didn't start a uh, speed yet, so... I mean, <laughs> he's actually behind, so... <laughs> I, I missed that part. I was just looking at, you know, drones moving back and forth. I saw a third, basically. Like, this is better than I expected today. But, okay, yeah, the 300 gas, the no speed, the very quick road warren. Uh, all of these are interesting things, though, Lambo. That's the one thing you can't deny. They are very interesting, yeah. Definitely not good, but that is kind of what we in StarCraft call interesting things as a pro gamer without trying to be offensive. Exactly. Now, obviously, after that explanation, it is a little more offensive whenever you hear it, but it's just for you guys. The, only the elite watches our videos anyway, so you guys know what is good and bad. I'm not trying to trick you. Exactly. The elite will have all the knowledge now. Um, we have a Twilight Council after a robotics facility. Usually, the order of these buildings is flipped as... Uh, most of the time when you get a quick Twilight Council, you want some type of upgrade from the Twilight Council and to get it together with, you know, maybe a prism or something like that, whether that's glaives or, well, mainly just glaives or maybe some zealot all in is possible. Here we see Tropic actually not doing that quite yet, opening up with an Immortal instead. That might work out though, because there are roaches in production. There's three out already. There's one more on the way. So the Immortal is going to be nice defensively. Tropic is so far ahead worker-wise anyway, that I don't think it really matters what type of tech he's getting, as long, honestly, as he just doesn't die to whatever is coming for him now. Yeah, if he spends his money, he's in a good position. Starts up a second Immortal. He also scouted with the adapts that they were not there wasn't a single worker on the natural of the Zerg. He also saw the Rocheborn, so theoretically he should be fine. I mean, the Zerg is now making jumps. I'm not even sure he wants to attack. I think the Zerg might have just tried to be super safe uh, with the Roaches. Also, already made two Spark Wallers. So yeah, the Zerg, the Zerg's just pretty much playing from behind. Proto's now hitting a pretty big supply block, but going Blink Immortal, which is not common from two base, but it's a good composition against what his opponent is doing, I guess. Yeah, it's a, a, a very non 
common composition. It's actually a build that we never see at the highest level. Any type of Blink Stalker plus Immortal Aggression. Most of the time when we see Blink Stalkers, it is from an Oracle opener. And it's going to be of three bases as well, minimum. Sometimes you see the third base not necessarily being thrown up, but the fake being there tends to be pretty important. Numatized Carapace here is on the way for our Zerg player, and that's going to finish pretty soon. We'll allow him to get some more information. I'm not entirely sure about this Overlord sack pre-Overlord speed. Could you enlighten me about this, Lambo? It was just to uh, make it more unlikely for his opponent to expect the Overlord speed. So that's why he did it. I like it. <laughs> Robo may be thrown down as well over here. 12 more drones coming in. Zerg, of course, has the ability to grow very quickly, Lambo. This is the one thing that people often forget about Zerg, is that it is the race that grows the quickest out of all. And despite having a pretty poor early game, it now almost looks like, you know, the Zerg is, is back in action. How is that possible? How do you defend your race here as, as not being imbalanced, if people are watching this game, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it is one of the traits that looks really good for Zerg at a lower level, but at the same time, this Zerg needed to watch out for all the possible up, uh, things that could happen for, to him. Like, he can die in any possible scenario. He could die to Oricus, he could die to early DTs, he could die to an Olin. So he had to make the spores, he had to make the, the early roaches. Because it's hard to scout, honestly, and it's hard to make reads. So, so that's why he finds himself in that uh, bad situation, and that's why he has to have the ability to make that many drones. Also, the Zerg units kind of suck, I think, on a lower level, especially once there's AoE out. So you need something to compensate for it. I think uh, it balances out pretty nicely at this level. I like it. Uh, 17 larva already waiting to be morphed into whatever the Zerg player decides. There's plenty of cash around as well. And there's three cannons going down. Is that because of what the Toss scouted here? I guess he scouted very little drone, so maybe it is a, a fair thing to do. Maybe a bit over eager on the static defense. I wouldn't mind seeing one or two extra gates being added. I'm not hugely fond of these gases being taken before any extra gates if you are being all in. The Zerk is actually committing pretty hard here into links. A couple more roaches as well. This is starting to feel extremely all in, but then we see the double Evo chamber and now a lurker then going down. I'm a little bit confused as to what is happening here exactly. Well, the thing is Zerg. This Zerg doesn't have any vision on the other side of the map, so he has no clue what's going on. So I think he's just afraid of dying. Because I think at this level, especially, you die constantly to random attacks, so you feel the need to um, make many units at first to be safe against everything, as I said before as well. And yeah, if you don't exactly know what's going on, which this, this Zerg definitely doesn't, he's just chilling in his base, like his name suggests. <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 it's it's difficult to play without vision, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So I, I don't mind it. I think it's always better, in case anybody's watching who has similar problems where they're constantly afraid, to always spend your larva. Even if you make the drones early on, they pay off so quickly that more often than not, you're going to lose because you didn't spend the larva. Also, if you just make units right away, you can go to the other side of the map and try to do something. It's still better than having idle larva. Idle larva is definitely the worst out of all the options. Just waiting is not a thing that you can do with Zerg. Yeah, you always want to produce something at least. I'm watching this game and I'm starting to become a bit afraid. So for the people who are not aware, about, I think it's three or four weeks ago, we had a TVT game that I, honestly was the most boring game that I've watched in my entire life in which legitimately nothing happened. <laughs> We're now nine minutes in and the resources lost is 512 to 300. After the TVT, I had a I had a talk with the guys. Simply simple geometry, he's called, who does all the replays for us. He picks the replays, watches them, and then anonymizes them for us, so we don't know, you know, who it is. If we recognize the names, it's not as much fun. Um, so we have someone that does it for us. We had a talk. He was like, "Yeah, the funny thing is," he said, "is that when I watch these games in eight times speed." They actually all look very interesting. He <laughs> 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 said, I kind of forgot that you guys have to watch it at one time speed. And I'm afraid that this one managed to sneak through once again as well. Because <laughs> so far in the first <laughs> 9 minutes and 46 seconds, <laughs> we haven't had too many interactions yet. <laughs> as uh, 11 hydros are now popping out, we have the uh, Lurker upgrade, the Seismic Spines that is being researched, the Adaptive Talents that is being uh, researched over here as well, which of course increases the movement speed as well as uh, reduces the burrow time of the Lurker. In this game, still very expensive Lambo, but I heard that this upgrade might be getting buffed by the by the balance council. Yeah, you, you, you can name it how it is. It's called the Zerg Cabal with all the Zerg buffs that are dishing out lately. 
And um, yeah, I mean, chilling, not yet in, in the buffed state of Zerg, that will soon be the case, as is tradition with every single patch that always buffs Zerg. Uh, but yeah, the, the Protoss is honestly doing nothing, but usually whenever this happens, I prefer the Protoss side of things at a lower level. The thing is, Lurkers apparently are also really good at a lower level, so maybe before carries are out, this might actually end up better for the Zerg player. As yeah. he's now moving out, and I mean, you're never on the map kind of at this level, right? Theoretically, it, it should be impossible for the Zerg to just move across with slow borrowing Lurkers with the army that the Protoss has, but he, he could just borrow on top of his opponent's third base and take a fight there. It's still just not that many units, to be honest. And there's four Colossus shooting from very far away. Good storms as well. The Zerglings are tanking quite nicely. The Colossus are exposed at the top. And the Zerg is doing honestly better than I expected, but I think he's gonna get cleaned up now. I don't think there's detection. detection. Is there? I, I thought the cannon was detecting far enough. Now it definitely is, and now also mm -hmm. the, an observer. Yeah, got observer here. popping in over here. The Colossus, uh, with their large range, are going to be taking out these lurkers. Immortals helping out for sure as well. 78 workers to 68. More hydras and roaches in production for the Zerg, who already has a fifth base, which isn't quite mining yet. Our Protoss player probably wants to transition into some type of air force eventually. The fleet beacon is out, but hasn't started any extra stargates quite yet. Forges have been, well, not spinning in quite a while, despite there being two. Uh, upgrades are still looking better for the Protoss, though, with 2-1 versus 1-1. One, one. Yep. I, I, I still hope for the Protoss that he transitions into carriers eventually. I mean, he does have the fleet beacon. I think it would help quite a bit. He also is taking one of his geysers at his fourth base, which he really needs. Could also keep expanding with the extra minerals that he has. But for now, he's kind of just playing tower defense. He's just not making many units that are actually good against the Lurkers. He's, he's building disruptors one by one. But the Zerg is now out mining him, and I think he's making a competitive army. Usually, I, I, I don't think it's that bad if the Zerg outmines the Protoss, but if you mass Lurkers against Colossus High Templar, I actually do, <laughs> do kind of like it for the Zerg. Yeah, it's up to 13 Lurkers right now. Is there any Hydras? There's three Hydras remaining, could still turn into Lurkers as well. There's no air army whatsoever. Observer is spotting all of this. We haven't seen any type of aggression really from the Toss. No Zealot run-bys, no Prism across the map, no clearing creep, no nothing. And I think right now this would be a, a, ve a very solid timing for a little bit of a Zealot run-by to run in. We have a single Spine on the far left base, but that is it for the static defense. All the Lurkers are out on the map as well. Like, it's going to be so difficult to deal with, with, with harassment coming out of the toss. There's a crap ton of cannons as well. Especially here on the... Actually, I was going to say especially on the right side, but honestly, the left side looks just as powerful with five cannons, a bunch of batteries. If the Protoss is even remotely close to being in position before the fight starts, before the Lurkers get to borrow, I'm not quite sure how good this looks for the Zerg. Well, he, uh, he is kind of in position. He gets a couple of Lurkers from the get-go. He should storm the Zerglings right now as well. Storms overlap a little bit, but he clears most of the Zerglings, which means that the cannons automatically do work on some of the bigger units now. The two Disruptors will also soon be able to fire again. So they're kind of overstepping here with the Roaches. And once the Roaches are gone, the Lurkers alone should not be enough against this, uh, this Protoss army. As the Disruptor now also recharged and can shoot again. Yeah. Once again, an issue really here being the lack of detection. There's one observer that's on the other side of the map, so these lurkers are going to stay in position. I think the Toss just needs to give up this base for now. While building the mothership, uh, a new observer probably should be the priority. As Protoss decides, you know, I lost my forward base, maybe time for me to go across the map, and I don't actually mind it. If there is any type of detection here with this push, I don't really see a, a way for the Zerg to hold this. There's hardly any lurkers, there's only six. If they need to run back home, I think at least two bases will have been taken out before the Lurkers get back home, no? Yeah. How, how much larva does the Zerg have? He has 10 larva. I think in this in this specific scenario, I actually think it would be best for him to just produce Ultras. And he's doing that now, four Ultras. The, the Protoss army just has two Immortals. The rest is not really that good against Ultras. So if he can somehow max out, I, I still think it's, it's good for the Zerg. But for now, it's it's full-on defense mode. That's, I don't see where the Observer is. Did it die? Uh, there's, yeah, it, di it died, and there's a new observer flying across the map now, so the lurkers for now are good enough to hold the door. But after, as soon as the observer is done, I feel like the Zerg wouldn't have enough that the Protoss is turning around. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a weird game. Mothership is going to add in into this army as well right now. There is 
one overs here, I think, on the map. Yeah, just a single one. So that mothership, I mean, it's going to be very good, but without any overs here, it would be even better. Fort base hasn't been rebuilt quite yet. Protoss way more all in than he really needs to be. Zerg still on a low drone count, very high mineral count. No larva, though. Yep, no larva. I, I still think the best for him would be to just mess Ultras at this point, because he has very mineral heavy bank at this point as well. He doesn't have detection here whatsoever, so... Oh, there's actually one over here, but it's off to the top. So the Protoss can push in for pretty much free here, and uh, the Zerg has no units left. He's morphing four more Lurkers. He now finally joins the Overseer together with his army, but the Overseer could also be sniped. It's also just not enough units from the Zerg here, period. He has four more Lurkers running up to the Protoss army. They do get to borrow. The Disruptor shoot from too far away actually gets his own. I'm gonna move commanding into the Lurkers without vision. He's losing all of his units to two Lurkers. <laughs> Warped on top of the Lurkers as well. Uh, might be capable of clearing up these final ones. It is going to be close though. The supplies are very, very even right now. We have three Ultras in production as well as five Hydras. Queens are trying to hold for now, but the Zealots are just absolutely ripping through them. That's kind of a big deal because transfusion on Ultras would have been nice. Although the real threat isn't really coming from ground units right now. It's going to be just <laughs> this single mothership. Damage output of the mothership is pathetic, but it might just be good enough if there's only a single Hydra to fight it. There's two Hydras on the map right now. Mothership needs to turn around to try and deal with it. Instead, the mothership <laughs> decides to just fly home as we're starting a bit of a chase here with, with Ultra Ling, which obviously doesn't really work. There's one Hydra in there as well, still in the mix. It's going to get taken out at some point. This, the Zerg now decides to attack with what is, what, three Ultralisk and 13 links. There's a lot of cash in the bay in the bank as well, still for our Zerg player. So technically, if he ever manages to spend that money, should be fine. Yeah. Tropic actually caught an Ultralisk there with a Stalker weapon, which was kind of nice. But at this point, he honestly has no units. Two Immortals are about to pop, though, and that should mean that he can stabilize because at this point, it's just one Ultra and a couple of Zerglings. But yeah, I think it's all about it. whether or not the Zerg can actually spend his minerals at this point. The Protoss also not mining perfectly. He has 34 workers at his fourth base, and he has six idle workers in his natural, whereas he has a single worker on his initial third base. So that's bad for him. He needs to get that fixed. Oh, and the Mothership finally goes down to four Hydralisks. Yeah, super battery was available as well there. That's kind of sloppy. Could have definitely saved that. Stalkers having a difficult time fighting against these links. Don't forget that the upgrades for Protoss are quite good. The Ling upgrades, well, they have plus one melee, plus two carapace, and I guess Adreno is going to help here as well. Feels like the Zerg is finally breaking through, and just as I say, that carrier and two new immortals do pop out. Shield upgrades as well as plus three armor is getting closer and closer to being done here for the Protoss player. That's going to help. Um, I'd love to see a... Wait, there's a Templar archives already. Well, in that case, I'd love to see some Archons. Yeah, we've been seeing yep. Templars all game already. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, he went Storm initially. He also had a couple of Icons. I I would like to see him warp in more of those as well. I, I really don't think he realized he has all his Nexus rallied towards his fourth base because he has 40 workers there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a nice little party over there. As the old third base only has 9 out of 16. Once again, an attack out of the Zerg. Once more, I think it's ill-advised that the Protoss, well, A moves half of his army in before the rest arrives. That is a mistake. Lurk is now showing up to the party as well. There are four observers, uh, two on the other side sieged up, none really where they need to be, as these Lurkers are having an absolute field day against the Archon Immortal Zealot composition. Carriers being caught out by the Hydras, or perhaps the Hydras are being caught out by the Carrier. Well, with the upgrades, the Hydras are actually quite powerful, so the Carrier has not a single attack upgrade here. And against plus two Carapace, that is a little bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another issue though for the Zerg is that he just can't spend his money. He's making Ling Hydra now, which I honestly don't mind. I think it's uh, trying to stay basic, trying to s to spend all of his money. Uh, one thing that would really help him is making a couple of queens so he can actually inject, or even just making extra extra hatcheries. I think the, the Protoss has finally started to clear all of this up, and also taking really good fights towards the end of this. The Protoss is also kind of struggling with spending his money. He also only has seven gateways, but... With his economic situation, this should honestly be enough. <laughs> as he gets another pretty decent cleanup. But at the same time, he's making a carrier and a, and a colossus. He really just needs to fix his saturation. Like, his, <laughs> he's just not mining anymore. Yeah. 
I, I, I was gonna say that losing the workers might not be that bad, but then I realized that, that you know, worker transfer might be a while. We finally see it happening here as these uh, 18 workers, 19 workers are moving over. Bottom side base is being cleared here. Zerg running out of larva pretty rapidly. Well, there is still 12, they're just not being used. I, I don't quite understand this, Lambo. I, yeah, for a second I thought he didn't have uh, one of his hatcheries off kit. I think the one on the third base, I thought, but... Yeah, I mean, it's it's a race <laughs> it's a race against the clock for the Provost. He needs to kill the Zerg before the Zerg manages to spend all the money. And for the Zerg, it's all about spending said money. He's trying to make Ultralisk now, which is obviously the most expensive unit that he can make. But the one thing that he's forgetting is that he can also make Queens. He really needs extra Queens extra to in order to get extra Injects, but even he can use the Queens in those fights. Oh my god, he's just GGing out and the Protoss wins. Wow. Dude, that was that was still salvageable, I think. If he if he started making he even could have made like 20 spines for, for all I care. The the Protoss wasn't really mining that much anymore. Yeah, it's a little bit surprising that, that GG arrived you know, so early, but this GG is surprising to you, but it is much more surprising to me, as it's the Zerg player that submitted this replay. <laughs> oh man, the the first week where I don't listen to who actually submitted the replay. <laughs> So I was just, I was waiting this entire time, Lambo, for the game to turn around. I'm like, surely at this point, this is where the Zerg, you know, is going to spend this cash into Mutas and we get an epic base trade and it's all going <laughs> to be okay. <laughs> and then Tropic just walks over and absolutely destroys Chilling over there. He still has a lot of cash in the bank. It is a very tricky game, though. Um, I felt like at the start, well, the, uh, I guess the, the early game wasn't that solid. This is a North American server, by the way. Um, the okay. early game wasn't that solid. You know, there was definitely some mistakes here and there. And I think things could have definitely been improved in the first three minutes. And I think that tends to be a good indicator of what level you are at if the first three minutes already aren't good. But then the follow-up, you know, cannons were built spells were used lurkers were being burrowed we didn't see a lot of move commands we saw a couple when there was no detection and people struggled with that but overall i feel like the basic con concepts were there so if i'm going to guess first which is what i'm about to do i would guess north american game this to be at 3384 Okay. Yeah, so usually I would have guessed something very similar to that. But I remember that earlier on uh, in, in this show, the NA players, I always guessed way too low. Because on NA, apparently you get an MMR boost. Uh, so in order to come back here, I'm going to go ahead and say this is 3,812 MMR. 3,812. I I think this might be a little bit high, but I, there there's, there's an off chance. There's or this actually hitting? I think it's a small of chances. I'm opening the file as we speak. <sighs> Server and a submitter was LT Dunbar, our Zerg player, with an MMR of 3100. No! <laughs> and 77. <laughs> and there goes Lambo's dreams of a comeback <laughs> in season one. <laughs> well, technically, it's possible. It happens the other way around three or four times in a row now as well but well, well but i i well you you do the first guess and i have to go super hard and well, one, you don't one, have one to. if you're just very accurate all the time that's all stupid this is a this is a weak there's a weak cheap out here uh, lambo you know it, because if you're just accurate all the time and i'm off by 50 and 100 over time you you know you'd make up for it so either you have to play very well, we don't we don't we don't do that many episodes anymore for the first that's season true. i would call it so I don't think this is entirely fair, this assessment, because I don't think... <laughs> I, I think if you're always just 200 off... Like, I, th I thought your guess right now was pretty good. Yeah. I, I don't think I can I can win anymore. But I thought today was actually a good opportunity for me to, to come back, because I thought their micro was pretty good. But yeah, their early game was crap, uh, especially the Zergs. So, yeah. sucks. It is, it is what it is, Lama. It is what it is. We can't always win, and sometimes we always lose. That's the way life is. <laughs> this has been my life at least for the past six years in professional, seven years in professional StarCraft. <laughs> I need to keep up to date. When's the last time I won a tournament again? It's like, ah, 2016. And so every year I have to add a year. It becomes more painful every time as well. Um, all right, that's going to be it for me today, as well as for Lambo. We'll be back with more next week. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Noobs in the Skies. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll see all of you next time for a new video. Bye-bye, my friends. Bye-bye.